everyone, and thank you for joining me. I'm in my basement <laughs> working on some uh, projects, I guess. It's winter here in Wisconsin, and uh, it's been cold, very cold. So I haven't been out in the woods much, uh, kind of buttoned the cabin up. As you know, or if you haven't seen my videos, go back. You can go back and check them out. But I've used my chainsaws, my Granberg mill, and a couple of chainsaws, and I've used them extensively in my building project. Yeah. Right now I'm kind of, you know, hung up because of winter. It's hard to work on that stuff in the winter, I'll be honest. Your hands get cold and you just can't stay warm and it's slippery if you got to try to work on the roof parts. So I kind of buttoned her up for the winter. Um, so I decided today I'm going to do a little uh, video here on chain maintenance for my chainsaws because I use them a lot. Now, what I end up doing a lot of times uh, when I'm cutting with the Granberg mill making lumber, you need a really sharp chain and you need it really even so that it makes a fairly nice side on the boards. Uh, that doesn't always, you know, um, work out that great, but you know, if you, if you keep the chain sharp, and uh, you have them uh, even, it'll cut, it'll cut good, and you'll end up with a pretty decent side to each board or two by four, or whatever you're cutting, or you know, four by six or whatever you're cutting, they'll turn out pretty good. Uh, once the chain gets wore down too far, and I do use a, I do use a sharpener. Uh, I sharpen by hand sometimes, but mostly just out in the field or out in the woods. At home, I, I throw it on my sharpener and I straighten everything up. And uh, of course, by doing that, you do shorten the life of the chain. You do take off quite a bit of material when you're sharpening it. So when a chain gets too short in the teeth, um, like this chain, for example, is too short in the teeth, and uh, compared to a brand new chain, um, then what I will do is basically uh, shorten it up. This is like a 20 inch chain. Um, I'll shorten it up for my uh, 16 inch uh, brush saw. It's, it's actually a little chainsaw, and uh, that way I'm not wasting the chain. You can use it to cut small stuff, brush and then limbing and that, but you won't, you know, have the problem of cutting something big with it and certainly not making lumber with that chain. Now it doesn't matter if you use a, a rip chain or a straight chain. It, it, it really doesn't matter if, you, if you're going to shorten up a rip chain and use it to cut brush or you use a regular chain, regular semi chisel chain uh, to cut brush with. Um, a lot of people maybe don't know what a rip chain is, so I'll just take a quick minute here and show you all. And uh, basically, you run a rip chain, you know, with a sawmill, with a chainsaw type mill. And uh, the reason is you you want to make you want to make your lumber as smooth as possible, so you don't get a lot of circle cuts in it, you know, with a chain you know, with a chainsaw chain. Uh, because it, a regular standard chain takes out a lot of takes out a lot of material, and um, I'm gonna get this close to the camera so you can possibly see. Now that, or hopefully you'll be able to see it. Now here you can see that's about a 33 degree, 32 degree um, bevel on that. This is right out of the box, so this is this is factory, and that's you know that is a standard chain. That's not a rib chain. And that takes big gouges, you know, when you're cutting across the grain. So yes, yeah, so when you're bucking, you're uh, felling, or you're even limbing for that matter, you would probably want to use this particular type of chain, obviously. So then by comparison, and this is this one actually has been sharpened, I think, a couple times. But I've sharpened it very carefully. And uh, you can, you'll see the difference, hopefully, on camera. And that is a rip chain. I don't know if you, I can see the teeth, the difference quite easily, and hopefully the camera will show it. But you can see this is actually about a 10 degree, a 10 degree bevel on that tooth. So that really is the, the long and the short of it. This is a standard semi chisel, and then this here would be your rip chain. 
So the idea is, at least it seems to me, you keep the you keep the chain speed up uh, with the rip chain because you take very small bites. At that that that's ten that ten degree uh, bevel on the on the chain um, makes a huge difference while you're cutting. So you know that that's really the main difference. Now Granberg they actually make I call it a skip rip and I had one chain years ago of theirs and it was basically just like this it had a, t a 10 degree bevel cut in each of the uh, teeth and then every third tooth was a half size roughly a half size tooth and then back to two you know alternating and then another small tooth so I called it a, a, a rip a skip rip and uh, the reasoning for that I don't know and it really to be honest with you it didn't seem any different now I have a little bigger better chainsaws I do now than I had then so maybe it does make a difference um, and, and my saws now are big enough that I can't tell but basically um, that's the only difference in chain so you can actually use that chain to buck cross cut you know whatever you can go cut across the grain it just works better when when you cut you know with the grain like when you're making lumber like this stuff here now this is this actually is bought in lumber I had this uh, uh, laying around and I used it for this tabletop but uh, it's just you know it's nothing fancy but that's basically you want to get a fairly smooth you know uh, top almost of course now this is factory lumber so this was cut a big circle mill run through a planer and everything, you know. So yeah, this is perfect. You can even see the the marks on it from or the uh, proofing or whatever um, grading, I guess that it would be. Yeah, you can even see the grading of the wood um, here. But uh, you know, you can you you won't get wood this quite this good come off of a a, a chainsaw mill. Now a bandsaw mill, that's different. Bandsaws are much nicer that way. But, uh, so anyway, basically, long story short, what I end up doing, once my chains are a little bit, a um, little bit wore, or I should say quite a bit wore, then I'll actually shorten, shorten them up and basically just use them uh, for limbing and like brush, sawing brush and stuff like that with a smaller chainsaw because it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. They don't make, I don't know, they call it a kerf, the width of the cut and I don't know if they get short enough um, if that kerf then gets too tight and it starts to bind and it just doesn't seem to work right so what, what I end up doing is shortening up the chain well of course to shorten up the chain we got to split it well I'll show you how to split it but the first thing you have to do is you want to decide where you're going to split it now this is a this is an 18 inch chain here um, now there is a number you could count the teeth out now when I count the teeth out I always get it wrong I don't know why but I have a real problem counting the teeth out so I just say to heck with that I grab the the chain I want to shorten and then I lay it right on top of the chain that I know that works on that size saw or that size bar and saw combination so we line it up just like that so here let me adjust this a little bit so you can see now on this end right here you can see that it's it's and basically I line up the bottom I don't I line up the teeth at the bottom not the cutting teeth but the guide teeth and, and you can line those up and then you'll see right where you have to cut, you have to split it. Well, you'll have to split it twice. You'll have to split it once and then shorten it up with the second split. So basically, we got this one here. You can see when you pull this apart, we're gonna need that one goes there, this one goes there. Yeah, so we get our marker and obviously pulling that one, we're gonna save that tooth and we're going to save that tooth. So we want to pop this one here. It's actually a cutting tooth. And this one here. 
it'll make just a little opening we'll lose a little bit of cutting space but it should be okay so that's how you that's how i do it and there might be other ways of doing it um i don't know how well like i said you can count it out so i do have a chain splitter you need a splitter and a joiner i guess they call them and uh the splitter basically is a press that pops the pins out of it um you can you can uh what I, all, what I normally do is whichever ones I'm gonna pop through, I take them over to the bench grinder and I take a little bit of material off of them and I'll show you that process, so. that's basically the splitting process in a nutshell so sometimes you'll have have a little bit of a dinged up uh, tooth at the end here chain where you're going to join them so you might want to put them on a little grinder and uh, give them a shot just grind them up a little bit um, this one turned out pretty good no no problems really and hard time coming apart you don't want to reef on it too much Let's see, and a bunch of pieces too. Once in a while you break a chain, and then it's nice to have a piece. So, it's just basically a link. Yeah, just basically a link. So, what you end up doing here is, this is our joiner. So, what we gotta do, and this is kind of a pain, uh, especially with the cameras it's, it takes about three hands so what you want to make sure is you get these lined up correctly I've actually done them done them kind of wrong inside out which is very wrong and uh, <laughs> yeah so basically what it is this is a little press also and then this is a I don't know it makes a it's it's gonna take it's going to take this, these little extended pieces here and spread that out, smash it down, kind of peen it over. So now I know they do make kits. You can do it with like a, you can split them with a, um, it looks like a vice grips with a couple of things on them. And then you, you split the chain with that and then you get your piece and then you put it over on the next part of the, the vice grips and you clamp it down and you turn a little handle and it does the same stuff. Now, I don't know how good those work. I have no idea. I've heard they don't work all that well, but I've never tried it, and I'm not going to say that I know. Um, so, what we do here now, the way I got it set up, you hang this over here, I hang this in here, see? This is why it takes three hands, so. But you got to get this lined up. You take this side, goes against the flat side and that should fit in there and of course we'll press it all together so we'll make sure that it fits good and then make sure you get your your little plate on the right way it only goes one way so and basically all you have to do I'll get my hands out of the way here once I get this lined up This has a little, this side that you screw together has a little flat piece. It's actually, I should say it's flat, but then there's a little divot that fits that rivet. So you line that up, get that close to this way, 90 degrees, and make sure that's all good.
see, we'll line it up. Like I said, it won't line up exactly now because we have one long, look at that though. The length is just right. That should work. That'll work for the for a little chainsaw. I got a little Sax Dolmar that I use for that kind of work and that chain will be perfect for it. At any rate, I'd like to thank you for joining me. We'll see you next time.